Hello and welcome to Rise of the Data Cloud. Today's episode features an interview with Sunny Betty, CIO and CDO of Snowflake. Sunny has previously held senior positions at Deloitte, VMware, and NVIDIA. In this episode, Sunny talks about how Snowflake is a data-driven company, data security in the cloud, how to use AI to minimize data threats, and much more. So please enjoy this conversation between Sunny Betty, CIO and CDO of Snowflake, and your host, Steve Ham. So you're a very busy guy. You have three roles, three leadership roles there at Snowflake. Chief Information Officer, Chief Data Officer, and also you head up corporate security. I think it'd be really good for the listener if you could start by talking a little bit about each of those roles and how you put your own stamp on them. We definitely have all the three roles that you mentioned. So let's maybe start with the CIO role. So as you know, we're growing up business. We have scaling challenges and we're getting into new markets. So we need business process systems and automation that needs to be done in a very graceful manner. And so we have a lot of initiatives in the IT space to partner with the business, whether it's in sales, finance, marketing, support organization, engineering organization, and help build the processes and the infrastructure that's needed to scale very gracefully. So that's probably the most overarching charter for IT. On the uh, chief data officer portfolio, I'd like to emphasize that using our product internally is top of the initiatives that we have. So Snowflake on Snowflake is a very important initiative for us internally. And the way we're partnering with our product management and engineering team is we want to be customer zero. As soon as they're getting ready to go to market months before that, we want to basically be the first customer to use it uh, and give them as much feedback as possible so that they can really polish the product for prime time and go to market with a very good experience for the customers. And then finally, on the security, as we led up to our IPO, there was a lot of compliance initiatives that have been kicked on for the company. And, um, you know, some of them are regulatory requirements and to new markets we're trying to get into. And some of them are also requirements that as you go become a publicly traded company, you have to fulfill those obligations. So that's how the three areas come together. And um, we can go into more detail as you wish to. I did actually want to probe a little bit into the chief data officer role. And that's because a lot of organizations claim to be data driven. It's one of those catchphrases of the day. But I'm not sure that they are necessarily. So how do you define the term and what are the most powerful ways that Snowflake uses data? So I think our first principles in the company are that if we measure the right set of things, we believe it will drive good business outcomes. That's fundamentally our first principle thought process in every organization in the company. And being a data platform company, we have to really live up to that promise. Uh, So I can give you some examples in the IT organization on how we use it. In essence, for IT organization, um, ServiceNow platform is a a very important platform on how we actually do all our work, how the tickets come in, how we communicate with our end users, and how we actually do change management, problem management, every aspect of what an IT lifecycle workflow looks like is all managed in our ServiceNow platform that we rely on. It's a SaaS-based application. We have integrated all of the data that sits in ServiceNow into our own internal instance of Snowflake, which we call Snowhouse. All that data gets ingested in it. We start in IT. Our first meeting on Monday is a meeting called Operations Metrics Review. And what we do is, For all the verticals of IT, we spend a good solid one to one and a half hour in inspecting all the key metrics that we really care about. And we start the week like that. 
And it really gives us a good pulse of how we're performing. And that meeting is not just for me and my staff. It's pretty much for the whole IT organization. Everybody's invited. We have a rotating agenda every Monday. And we go through all the different pillars of IT, whether it's security, whether it's availability of a service, whether it's reliability of our service, or it's employee user experience. So we measure all of those dimensions and uh, it's all inside Snowflake and it's visible to all of IT employees and they know that they're being measured and there's full amount of transparency and visibility for all employees that uh, manage those workloads. So it's not just the manager looking at the data and, and, and monitoring. It's, it goes down to each individual so they know about their own performance and how they fit in. That's right. That's right. Now, I wanted to go back into security a little bit because here, you know, we're talking about data. And going back in history, there was a lot of concern among enterprises and reluctance to move a lot of their data and their applications to the cloud because of concern about about data security. That's been overcome at this point, I believe, but if you could kind of walk us through how secure is the data in the cloud these days and and compared to on-prem data? I'll give you our example for corporate side. Um, So we are using the CIS framework. Uh, CIS framework is very similar to NIST or ISO. I'm sure you're familiar with those frameworks. And for us in Snowflake, we don't have any workloads that are inside a data center or anything on-prem. Every workload that we have is in the cloud. So it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity and, and situation to be in because you're not really worrying about the constant operational headaches associated with an on-prem environment. Uh, We partner very closely with the SaaS providers in ensuring and validating how they're keeping their security compliance posture up to date. And uh, we build automation around things that is our responsibility from a patching perspective. Mm -hmm. And then we're using our own platform to ingest all the security data that's absolutely needed for monitoring, measuring, and meeting the CIS control framework that we have implemented. Uh, And the most beautiful thing about this thing, Steve, is that if we do see anything that is suspicious, we have built so much automation and with ServiceNow platform that it triggers and opens up a ticket for the security professionals, the IT professionals to take action. So it's really event-based remediation that's taking place, not really after the fact. Majority of the times when you're in an on-prem environment, it's not that your IT or security guys don't want to act on it, but the problem is the signal is late. The signal gets to the person who needs to act on it in a non-timely fashion. With our platform, we're ingesting all this data. We're getting informed about it. We have written automation to trigger an action that needs to take place and it's happening you know, in instant time. Next path of this is to actually, you know, build more automation Uh where it's, it's being done through AI and ML, where we can even have actions taken on its own, where we're not even dependent upon a ticket to be initiated. It's done automatically if that event were to happen. Hey, does your AI enable you to do really weak signal detection and things like that? That's right. That's right. So it's not just automating, but it's also really finding patterns that maybe a human would not necessarily connect with the data breach or some kind of a problem. Yeah, I mean, a good example of that is insider threat detection is a very big use case right now, right? Where let's just use an example. If you have an employee or a contractor that is not intentionally trying to do a bad thing, but let's assume for a sake that it's their last week and they were trying to download a lot of data from one of the key applications on key workloads. Well, we want to know that pattern. You know, if that person was only downloading very simple sets of data and for some reason we see a huge spike in data that's being downloaded, 
if it's a bad actor, we want to know that real time. And we want to know that anomaly that you're talking about real time and prevent, protect the company for not getting that data in, into any wrong person's hands. So there's a lot of AI use cases around inside of threat detection that we're automating as well. You've been at Snowflake since January, and obviously a lot has changed. We've had the, the global crisis, the economic crisis, the, the IPO, all sorts of uncertainties in, in the environment. When you came in to kind of you know, rethink and, and build a new IT organization, but at the same time, you had all these external issues. So if you would just kind of walk through how you assess things, how you reorganized how you set things on a different path, and then also how you responded to all of these incredible uncertainties around the company. Sure. I started like last week of January. And obviously, you know, the first month when you join a new company and you're adjusting, you're acclimating yourself. So I was in more of a fact-finding mission the first month, meeting pretty much every department, meeting my team, meeting all the, uh, and, and more in a learning mode, right? Trying to understand what the current landscape is, where there are challenges, where there needs to be focus. And we started to get information about COVID that's really growing in this country. So the first thing I did was I basically told the IT and the security team that let's try to not come to the office for an entire day. And let's not inform anybody about that. So pretty much let's do a remote work from home day, the entire team. Like I don't want anybody in IT or security to show up and let's see how we actually service the company. We did that in end of February timeframe. That's when kind of COVID was picking up a little bit in New York and other areas, it hadn't trickled in itself into California, but we had employees in, in New York. So we started to really practice BCP, business continuity planning in a way. And we learned a lot from that exercise. And sure enough, in two weeks down the road, March 10th, we pretty much decided as a company, we're going to work from home. And uh, fortunately, because as I mentioned earlier, we don't have anything on-prem everything is in the cloud. We had to tweak some business processes, but overall our intensity in servicing our employees from a remote perspective really increased. And I'm extremely proud of the team on how we have actually adjusted and fine-tuned the processes that we needed. Snowflake is one of those cloud native companies and the valley is full of them but the world is full of companies that were on-prem first and and probably still are a lot on-prem do you see a big trend shifting here do you see a lot of companies moving more rapidly to the cloud i think everybody is going to move towards the cloud that's a given that transition is going to happen in some companies it was not as much of a priority in the past But with the COVID situation that we have gone through, I think it becomes a forcing function. And I I know so many of my peers who have a lot of workloads on-prem, they're all trying to accelerate in the valley. They're all trying to move things to the cloud. And I would say that in an on-prem environment, you are wasting 30 to 40% of your bandwidth in really operational challenges that you you don't have to deal with in in a cloud-first company. And um, I mean, that's kind of a rough estimate of a number. It could be even higher in some companies. Uh, But all of a sudden, you know, the IT professionals are really trying to accelerate the transformation that the companies need from the IT organization because they're not dealing with all the on-prem operational challenges that come with it. 